Hi family, it's your blood brother Triss in Christ. Um, well, I've got quite an important message. Well, hopefully a lot of my videos are important, but this one is especially important, I think. It's about preaching the gospel. And um, last night, me and a friend Rachel, we went for, we, well, we went to a worship service, but it wasn't on. And so we ended up having a curry and then by the end of the curry we were like well what should we do and um we were in the middle of a city i haven't been to the city for a while and i thought you know let's go and i said let's go and find some christians and hang out and and whatever and almost immediately we met um someone who rachel knew she's a street pastor um, and she goes around Exeter uh, finding needy people who are drunk or whatever and picks, picks them up off the floor and dusts them off and helps them out kind of thing. They don't really preach the gospel that much but they do get to meet a lot of the nightclub bouncers and that kind of thing. And this guy was a nightclub bouncer. Uh, and um, immediately I knew it was an opportunity as soon as... As soon as uh, the um, the opportunity presented itself, I was like, "Right, Lord, what do you want to do?" Um, I was looking for a way in, um, and sure enough, he is an ex-Muslim, so that's a good start because they already believe in a God, um, and. He, he wasn't a practicing Muslim, so that's even better, you know. And anyway, we told him about Jesus and spent a good, probably half an hour, telling him the good news uh, about sin, about how we all need a savior. It was great, it was brilliant, and I praise the Lord for that opportunity. But my message for you today is to look out for those opportunities because God presents them all the time to us. The harvest is great, but the harvest is a few. And if you're a born again Christian, like me, we are harvesters. We are expected to harvest for the Lord. And the way that we harvest is to sow the seeds and let them grow, let God do the growing, and then other Christians come along and harvest. Like I'm sure there have been other Christians in this bouncer's life that we were talking to yesterday who have already sown seeds that have taken him to the point where he's ready to listen to the gospel, like we did yesterday. And um, so I, I certainly don't take any credit for it. Um, but I was ready at the opportunity to once again make those make make the flower blossom. You know, the seed had grown, whoever put a seed there before, because surely he knew something about Jesus, you know. Uh, he didn't realise that he was the Lord, but he did know about Jesus a little bit, obviously from the Islamic texts um, they hold him up as a prophet um, but there was something about it that there was a harvest to be reaped and because because I was ready to preach the gospel he heard it and I believe that there was fruit um, let's see what happens we'll see on, on judgment day if if it actually sunk in i think it has but what i want to encourage you to do is to study and really know the gospel so that when those opportunities come you are bold and fearless and courageous to step out and tell people the good news you know the good news is such great news. Everybody needs to hear it. Jesus is alive, you know. His spirit lives in us. We can be free from sin. It's amazing. 
And if you go into it with that kind of passion, if you go into it with that kind of knowledge as well, why would you be afraid to tell people, you know? You need to know the gospel so well yourself that you can you can tell people about it without any worry whatsoever. And that means studying. And, you know, hopefully I'm not blowing my own trumpet here, but I study every day. I, if, I, if I've forgotten what the gospel is, which happens, you know, because you can be vague about the gospel. You can know that Jesus died for your sins and whatever, but you, you don't know all the kind of nuances and little things about it that can really change a person. Um, when you tell them about it, like for example, I was explaining um, how in a courtroom he was the defendant and God is the judge and Jesus is his lawyer, his advocate. And these little kind of parables that help pictureize so they can visualize what you're trying to say and make it kind of a uh, um, yeah, you want you want to picture it so they they remember it and and that it makes sense to them, because you know a lot of times evil spirits will block ears and stop people from hearing what you want to say, especially if it's pure scripture. Um, Non-believers just don't hear it. Um, that's the other thing as well. I've got a, um, a Bible app on my phone. It happens to be the King James Version, which isn't ideal when you're talking to people who have no idea about the Bible because it's that kind of archaic English that is a struggle to understand, you know? Um, I, I, I wish the New Living Translation would have a free Bible app because... Um, you know, I don't want to pay for it really, but um, anyway, the King James will do, and so I was showing him set portions of scripture um, that I thought were relevant, and it was um, it was a great witness. And do you know this happens to me a lot? And the reason it happens to me a lot is because I'm looking for it. The next person I meet, I'm ready to tell the gospel. And I, I, sometimes the opportunity doesn't come, you know, because maybe that person's not ready or God hasn't set up the opportunity somehow. But generally speaking, um, we still need to be ready to explain it, even to the supermarket cashier or the, I don't know, someone who offers you a leaflet on the, on the side of the street about some, I don't know, party that's going on. You know, just anybody anybody is is part of the harvest and we are the harvesters so be encouraged and study so that you know the gospel so well that you can easily explain it to someone and be ready to defend your faith and also be an ambassador for Jesus you know you are his representative to the world we are on occupied territory. Satan is the god of this world and every, everybody who doesn't know Jesus is part of his kingdom. Um, so we are the resistance and we are the ones who are entrusted to explain the best news anyone's ever heard in the world. That Jesus is alive, that he came to save us from our sins and that we can have eternal life forever if we would simply trust him and believe so have a good day